Hey everybody, this is Rhino and we're back to Pinball Cage. So last time we played Haunted House, fine table. Seems like a lot of people liked it more than I did. Today I think we're playing Firepower 2, which is the sequel to Firepower, so that would certainly be interesting. This is also the first Pinball Arcade game we've had where a, a sequel to a table shows up. Um, there definitely was at least one table that they talked about that had been reskinned and re-released, so uh, this is a slight change on that uh, because I think this actually is going to be more than just a slight reskin. Firepower 2 from 1983, we kind of skipped over 82. There was only one table from that year. Is a recharge sequel to Firepower produced by Williams. It was designed by Mark Ritchie, with art drawn by Constiano Mitchell and Gian uh, Mitchell, which Gian, I su assume, might be either the first or second female that we've seen credited for designing a table, although half of these descriptions don't, uh, don't uh, give any credits to anybody. Warp into a thrilling outer space battle on this classic table with exciting features like double scoring, two ball, multi ball, spell fireball to score big, and extra balls and specials. Complete the left ramp to earn mystery scores and master the tough left orbit shot to lock your bonus. Firepower 2, the legend lives on. Okay. So. Let's bring up the extras and look at the flyer first. Kind of a boring flyer, but I can't really complain too much around that because once again, these flyers are not designed to be shown to, to consumers who would play the pinball. They're designed to be sold, get handed at arcade conventions for arcade owners, so that it's an industry flyer designed to convince an arcade owner to place an order and uh, for a table, or maybe two or three. And we have the pro menu back, which is great, because we've run into a few tables where that's been missing. Interesting, there's like a gap here, and I wonder if there literally was a gap or if this is just straight up, the game is bugged. Like you wouldn't see the gap at it really at any angle other than directly on top of it, but maybe that's because there was a thicker piece of metal on the front. But they tend to simulate even the fronts and sides of the table, even if you can't see them. So this seems like a weird case. And you can clearly say that, see that there's nothing in there, which why would you waste graphics power uh, rendering something nobody would ever see? So this is different. In the original Firepower, there was just a drop-down target here. And now they've revamped it and put a lane that returns it to the end lane here. And this is the first table we've seen with a wire ramp. We saw one uh, table that had... Uh, a tube, but I'd like to see, well, as we go forward in history, we'll see more of those. They've moved the targets, so this isn't just a revamp of the table. Uh, the standing targets that spell fire power are now angled more so that you won't have it just bounce back directly and potentially drain directly into the center. Um, there is also some standing targets hidden over there on the right, which will be kind of tough shots. I don't know why they say this tough lane is hard, or even that lane would be particularly hard. Although this is uh, interesting that there's a gate at this point, because then... What that makes it seem like is that there's a goal to get the ball to be stuck right in between there. And I don't know why you would have that. 
Like, that doesn't make sense. The, this is a spinner down at the bottom. But this is a gate. Which maybe indicates something, but I don't know what it's supposed to indicate. Unless it's supposed to be that you actually do lock, lock, lock three multiballs there. And then you have an ABCD that's... Uh, angled here so it would be fairly difficult to light up the A so we'll have to see if we have lane selection a square standing target when it was a round standing target in the central lane and I feel like they've moved these bumpers a little bit more so that you can't just drain back down I wouldn't be surprised if there's actually a gate under the plastic to stop that from happening too the right side lock looks pretty much exactly the same and i'm not sure if there was a right lane on the other side of there in firepower one this is doing the continue the art on the top of each section which well it's not continuing the art it's doing its own separate art but it looks fine there there's some slingshots on the side here that seem a little unnecessary but that's about all i can criticize different art on the table still no center bum bumpers still no kickback um, but this does feel like a um, improvement on firepower but somewhat fairly Fair to also point out that firepower at, is probably not 10 years old when this table came out. So we need to figure out the uh, that was an, that was an easy goal. That might be what those gates are for, is to, to, to know if you did a left orbit or a right orbit. Hmm. The plunger doesn't feel like it will let you pull back very far. Hmm. Yeah, that plunger is only going half the length. There, the right flipper is a lane selector. So spelling A, B, C, D does seem doable. So yeah, almost certainly you're gonna you're gonna have a goal that is spell firepower. What what I don't get here is the sound effects. They they don't seem like their improvements on the original firepower sound effects. Hmm. I wonder if I exited this table and loaded back in, if maybe we would find that the table geometry somehow crazily isn't didn't load right. Some of this sounds like sound effects from the first table. And you, you definitely, for a sequel to the table, would want to kind of heavily use the sound effects that that existed in the original table and then expand on that. But the, the whole just build up sound effect that's playing here just feels, feels weird. So this very well would could be a table that I would consider just turning the audio down on. Alright, so when I hit that, it opened a diverter on one way or the other. So there must be a secret sink thing. 
or maybe not. That might just be a guide. It feels like you can, you, you've got fairly wide air openings for hitting the out lanes on this table. So th this would be a kind of nudge table. All right, let's come back out here. You, here's fireball. That's not what I meant to click on. I shouldn't, should probably see where is fire power. Hmm. I know it's here somewhere. We know we played Firepower 1. Is this Firepower? Yeah. So 1983 versus 1980. Yeah. And can we just look at the table? We're not going to play it. Nope. Uh, So a slight variation, I, I think we actually do have to play it, like it's not talking now, Firepower 2 isn't, so they're, they're apparently over that gimmick, the art is different, the table's different, let's say Firepower 2 does feel like it is an attempt on an improvement without changing too much, I wouldn't be surprised if it, if it was kind of a rush job or a completely different team that actually made Firepower 2 and they just made that sound effect. See, you can hear it does make that sound effect of the powering up, but it only does it when you're drawing and plunging. You might very well make an argument that Firepower 1 is a better table because it's it's more focused and a little bit more of a pra good practice table. Where Firepower 2 feels very much like a, a, a just standard table. No, the sound effect plays all the time now, and the geometry of the table itself seems to be glitched. I have a hard time really believing that it, it would want, or it should, should play the same sound effect each time. I'm not sure if there is even a three ball multi ball here. It's just gonna make the the revving sound effect go higher and higher in pitch. And it doesn't seem like anything I'm even doing is affecting the pitch. It seems to be either doing it just by time. Alright, so that's the first light. So if I can get that left lane, I probably would accomplish something. If I can get that one right target, I can spell power. There we go, we just 
completed firepower, which I think means we now should go for a left lane shot. There we increase the bonus multiplier. I think you might have an argument here that Firepower 2 dumbs down the, the table a little bit. It, it, it definitely makes it an unrefined process compared to the first game. Uh, probably very friendly, but th that's uh, friendly for new players. Th that's going to be a weird argument, though, to potentially tell a kid don't play Firepower 1 and play Firepower 2, and then when you get really good at Firepower 2, go back and play Firepower 1. Honestly, you probably wouldn't get particularly good very fast playing Firepower 2, because there's no actual, like, need to focus on a goal. All you have to really do is keep the ball in play. In, in an interesting way, it's like, what a, what a difference a three-year span can make. In all fairness, I think probably 83 is about the time where you start to see fewer uh, arcade machines and bars and more and more in arcades for kids. So, I could certainly see a focus on making your product more kid-friendly and, and not just for expert pinball players only. 83 would have also been when the NES came out and when arcades would have been out of their first generation of their heyday because once home consoles started to pick up with the fad of the NES or the huge success of the NES, a fad of the NES I think is an inappropriate way to describe that. Um, so I just got over a million, which put me in second place. What's our last standard goal? Or in the mystery score? A quick way to score points on this table is the mystery score. Completing the right in lane lights the mystery score for 8 seconds. Shoot the left lane ramp. Mystery score is worth 20 to 99,000 points shown on the display here. Shoot the left lamp when the mystery score is not lit. Score is 5,000. There's one way to score an extra ball. That's to light the left ramp. Completing fire. Um, Pat B W and W E R, and shoot to left line. Okay. So this is one of those timing ones where you're going to have considerably less opportunities to to hit get the mystery score. So I'm going to have to get particularly good at. Hitting that left lane, left ramp shot. Hmm. What well, we 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 should play with the sound effects and see if maybe we could could see what the game would really would be like. Hmm. 
<laughs> with with no music at all. Honestly, your best bet to get the mystery score is probably to just set yourself up for multi-ball and then keep the balls in play as long as possible. If it's coming down at that angle, I can I can shoot it back up to left. So if we were to go over here, go to the sound of music, and turn down the table music, this would be a case where, once again, these settings are just over a global setting. Yeah, way better experience to simply turn off the table music on this one and just have it play sound effects. Of course, this doesn't really feel like a 1983 table, but but we'll ignore that. And this does kind of highlight that, yeah, you're not going to really be able to turn around a sequel to a table in less than a year. Th that was mostly true for uh, for arcade cabinets too, is that uh, that there weren't typically updates even at the point when they had updatable or easily replaceable chips for arcade games. Like, I, I know some of the Street Fighter games and and the like had. Uh, had some updates and then it would get reskinned, but very often that was around the concept of having to send back the internal uh, computer boards. And pinball's way worse than that because you'd have to ship back the entire pinball table. Which that did certainly create a nice. There we go. That's the end of all the standard goals. Uh, that did create a nice scenario where uh, you weren't able to just patch something easily, and thus it had to actually be tested and actually work, or, or otherwise you're going to cost yourself a lot of money to, to re recall a, a pinball or an arcade game. Nowadays, you can ship ship a game that's completely broken and just work on the assumption that the patches, the day one patch, will fix it. Right. So for the wizard goals, hold the bonus. Don't know how to do that. Score 150,000 release. Um, I assume that's 150,000 at the end of the play of a turn, earn the fireball special, earn the out lane special, and score a 495,000 bonus. Hmm. So, that to me seems like just have a really good game. And you should be fine. Would just be a matter of time. Oddly, no, no goal for for doing anything else that seems like it would be fairly complicated. Hmm. 
course you run into the problem again where if if you, I get all the wizard goals done in less than 30 minutes on a table, is that particularly a good table? Does it have the interesting the uh, elements that would make me want want to come back and play it over and over again? Because I'm I'm personally not ever going to look for a table that just lets me win and is super stupid easy. Uh, I want at least a small amount of challenge. I can't help but feel like this table was just particularly badly programmed and glitched. And maybe it's only the DirectX 11 version of the table. Maybe if I launched the DirectX 9 version of this table, it wouldn't have audio problems and what looks like 3D modeling problems. That doesn't seem realistic though. These problems seem to indicate just a lack of... of polish and a lack of quality assurance testing on part of Farsight Studios. the bonus. I don't know what I did to hold the bonus. was not enough to score me 450,000, so I feel like I would have had to I had to pull off a lot more success than what I did. And that was just a pathetic multiball. It is a fairly nice table to lock for multi-ball. That's real easy. Which, honestly, if you were going to make a table that was all about multi-ball, making it super easy to lock the first ball in multi-ball is a nice way to do that. some kind of bonus between play because I'm getting like 400 for even a poor round 400,000 for a poor round so I'm holding the bonus not the bonus multiplier or score multiplier table is so so easy to get multiball though it, it kind of devalues what multiball is so let's see 
Stone multi ball, lock ball here. Locking uh, ball scores 10,000 points the first time, 25,000 and 50,000 the third time. When the ball is locked, release the target there. Hmm. Shooting a lit release target scores 50,000 the first time, the second time, and 150,000. So basically, have multi ball trigger three times is the release. Uh, completing firepower three times in one ball lights that. The special is on the right side when it's drained. Complete a lit outline to score special worth 100,000. Hmm. Okay. Let's see. So, fireball special and outline special are pretty much the same. And then, when the ball is drained, the bonus is awarded. The bonus value starts at 1. Completing the ABCD adds 2 to the bonus value. Completing the left orbit and passing the diverter to add 3 to the bonus value. Hitting a fireball spark. Spell it target as this. Hmm. Hmm. The bonus value is reset when the bonus is awarded unless the bonus holdover is lit. Uh, to get the bonus holdover, complete firepower. And... Hmm. Let's see, when the bonus value is awarded, the bonus value is multiplied by a thousand points. If the multiplier uh, is not lit, the multiplier is one. So, five times a thousand times your score. So, five thousand times a score of basically, I think, 80 or slightly below 80 see like to get 495,000 points 80 times 5 would be 400 so that's pretty much the maximum bonus like recursively having every single light lit up basically which, with bonus holdover, in particular, that seems doable. It's, it's just going to be a matter of getting that left lane shot a lot more often. Both left lane shots a lot more often. and getting multipliers and getting multiballs. There's several goals here that, yeah, you might need to get four or five different good games to get each one of these wizard goals. And I think that's true probably for a lot of the wizard goals and even the standard goals on a lot of tables is that you might have to get lucky on one game to accomplish one goal and then get lucky on another game to accomplish a different goal. It kind of felt like the way it was being described that getting your bonus up was was fairly difficult since it was moving in increments of one, but honestly I don't think it actually is that difficult. Because you're you're gonna hit the firepower targets all the time anyways this is another one of these tables where I can easily make some small improvements uh, with a central peg a kickback a ball saver feature um, any of those or all three of those would would potentially help. Um, I'd like to, I would have liked him to have tweaked the angles of the outlines a little bit more. Notice how 
Uh, some pinball tables definitely make it very, very easy for the ball to go to the out lanes, and some literally have bumpers in the way to, to, to encourage the ball to not go into the out lanes. And that, that is probably 90% just experimentation and 10% greediness on the parts of the game developers. I seriously doubt anybody was thinking that they needed to make a change so that they could bilk people out of quarters faster. Because pinballs in arcades for the longest time were successful and profitable until they stopped being successful and profitable. Once again, no, this is just one of these tables that, yeah, I'm, I'm A, running out of things to say, and, and I'm running out of steam as far as really having a, a large desire to play it. Like, if I was going to try and grind and get the remaining 263 achievements uh, unlocked for a pinball arcade, this would be a table I, I would at least think I could get all the wizard score, wizard goal uh, achievements for. It, it does bring about an interesting question as far as, as I'm clearly a fair weather pinball fan since I bought all these tables and, and forgot about them for three years, um, I wonder if a real pinball fan at this point has done all the wizard goals? Um, probably? Assuming there, there is someone out there who, who a bought all the tables and played them all. But that would be a small number of people, anyways, who would have been a completionist and gotten them all. Although, actually, I imagine the number is higher than it normally would be because they did, they did announced that they were losing the licenses so they they warned people to buy the tables now or never of course the never part of that was slightly deceptive because most of those tables did fairly quickly become licensed by pinball fx3 all right and then we've got to go back to the options and turn the table music back up hmm still have that let's see what would the what would the options be Enter, 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 enter seems to be a bunch of start. We're back to what hmm. we're back to a different kind of interface instead of a pop-up menu, which really this indicates that there is actually three or four versions of Pinball Arcade, uh, Pinball Arcade that are running on here. Because sometimes you get a pop-up menu with options and sometimes you get uh, just a interface here that you'd have to have looked at the help menu to understand how, the, how it worked. Clearly, this was a small chip that they used. Um, 
Because there, the, there's not that many sound effects. Hmm. See, I'm not even sure what buttons are supposed to be doing what. Hmm. So that that's kind of useless. I have to go help to the help part. Hmm. And see, they really just want you to go to the manual which is on the internet pinball database, which that doesn't help really because half those links don't actually work. Um, all right. So if I was to go full control here, and try and lock the ball. And, and just try and control everything. What we would need is the holdover. It's fairly, fairly easy to line up everything. Get your multiplier up to the max. Mm. Go ahead and see if we can lock another ball. Mm. But you're not really going to accomplish anything. While well, you have multi ball going on, so is that the score multiplier that I just enabled? A uh, score holdover? Trying to get see a relative look at what it actually would feel like to to get your score multiplier all the way to the max. And then if can I get this one? there and then up that ramp I can't I I just don't have enough force with the ball controller so there's actually a shot here on this ramp because it's so angled and because ball control just has no force behind it and no momentum really so you, you can kind of set yourself up nicely here to this point but your, your goal would be to drain out a ball at that point and then interesting that's a different sound effect So then the goal would be to, once again, drain out a ball. So just let, let one fall without losing the other, which is kind of hard to do. And then lock it again. And 
that should be that should have been 150 thousand I'm trying to get this to go to an in lane on both sides. Let's let that ball drain out again. We'll just, for good measure, do it one more time. And then we'll play the rest of the we'll play the rest of the the table. Something lit the second part, so now every single light is pretty much lit that I think can be lit. Alright, so let's just play from this point. Just I got an outlaying bonus, I believe. And so I don't know what really I did to justify the outlane bonus, but whatever. Hmm. Yeah, you run into a problem where th this is kind of an example where you, you can only do so much more with the ball in play and you might as well just drain drain the ball and start over because you've maxed out all the possibilities and with the exception of being able to spell fireball and then shoot through the the left loop there's very little other that you can other things you can even target And I couldn't even figure out the operator's manual enough to to figure out if there would have been a way to add five balls instead of three. This is another example of the the bonus, uh, in particular, just being ridiculously high. That gave me, I believe, somewhere around a million times three. Times two and a half, two and a half million. Nah, it, it, it was probably closer to two million. You still have the annoying sound effects. You still have to, on a new ball, have to get your score multiplier up. Mostly just focusing on the play at this point. <laughs> not, not, not a lot to say. This would probably get annoying audio-wise, even if you turned off the the game music. The 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 sound effects themselves are very generic. Arguably a table like this probably sells pretty well in non-English speaking countries whereas a talking table would either just speak in English if it was in a non-English speaking country or or would have to have a different chip and be translated. And I bet there wasn't actually too much of that that happened because they're, they're only saying a few lines of dialogue in English anyways. Um, I wouldn't be surprised that even a modern pinball table probably is fairly not that localized to too many different languages. Uh, that might also explain why pinball isn't particularly anywhere as popular as like pachinko in, in places like Japan. 
I imagine most pinball tables also were only designed to use Western United States like 120 volt plugs. And so it would probably be difficult to to supply good clean power to um, to to a, a pinball table if you were in a different country. I'm sure a few fancier places did it, but. It would also just be kind of crazy to import a pinball table, which is very expensive. Um, with all the shipping. Pinball never really could have been commoditized, I suppose, as a as a concept. Uh, it, if if it if it ever could, it, it's most closest to that point now in 2021 than any other point in time. There's just a lot of custom design and a lot of custom artwork. That's funny that it didn't take control away from the flippers. Once again, feel, that feels glitched. Like that it would it would have been a game over, but I still could control the flippers. Yeah. I kinda wanna know what this says. Shoot again. And it's too bright, I can't see it. Something I literally can't see it in attract mode. That's kind of a problem. And see, that's the difference between like virtual lighting and real world lighting is you would be able to read it. Double score. So something does double score. Um, which seems to be slightly different than 2x. But I never found out what that was. Hmm. Is there anything on the table? Like, something was also lighting these uh, Williams bumpers. Which, no custom art on the bumpers, which that's interesting. These are s slightly smaller bumpers, too. Yep. Y you can definitely tell how there's just no standardization for any of the parts on a pinball table. And that's part of the beauty of pinball. Certainly is that there's no standard standardization, but it also kind of highlights some problems of just not ever being able to to develop anything at a industry of scale um, or economy of scale concept. So you see this big Williams speaker grill, which more modern tables would have had a second screen there. I still don't know why this tape, every single floor has like two holes on the ground there. It, it looks like somebody was smoking and those are like ash marks. Like it kind of makes sense that most arcades did have fairly dirty wooden floors that, that were, uh, had all kinds of scuff marks on them. So that, that feels like an arcade, but it, it seems too specific to, always have like two ash marks where somebody was smoking in the eighties in bars in particular. Yes. People would have been smoking potentially and playing pinball. I have definitely seen pinball tables that literally had cup holders and ashtrays attached to them so that you can continue to play. Although most arcades for kids were more draconian than that and, and would just say, no, you can't, can't have drink or food near a um, pinball table and almost one assumes that almost every arcade said no you can't smoke if you're a kid uh, in general well that went for an hour and if anything I would say the the thing that fireball 
2 does is make you want to play Fireball 1. And oddly for Pinball, that kind of makes, uh, not Fireball, Firepower 1. Uh, but yeah, oddly that kind of makes sense because if in 1980 you, you bought Firepower 1 and it's super popular even three years later, you buy Firepower 2, it's not as good. You stick it right next to fire po Firepower 1. People are still going to play Firepower 1, but every now and then they're going to get a little bit bored or there's going to be a line and somebody's going to say, well, I'll just warm up on fire Firepower 2 or I'll just play Firepower 2. It's pretty much the same. Or you've got kids in in a mixed arcade, so the, so the pros are, are monopolizing Firepower 1. You can have them play Firepower 2 um, right next to it. Um, and so the, there, there is almost a logical reason for that, because unlike digital video games, you just can't have an infinite number of, um, of people playing your game at the same time. You have to build different cabinets, and the arcade owners would have to buy for more cabinets. Uh, and even different than arcade cabinets, where you could have a four-player, like Turtles in Time, uh, um, cabinet or any arcade game that has four players, like the Simpsons beat 'em up video game. That's a great example of one too. Um, it's not taking up anywhere as much space to to add that second controller, or second player, or a third player. Almost, uh, almost all. No, I wouldn't say almost all, but I, I'd say almost half at least of every arcade cabinet had at least a two-player uh, configuration so that somebody else could put in a, a quarter in play and it would take up considerably less size in square footage than a pin, pinball, whereas pinballs would be one player at a time. You could, you could potentially have four players, but they would have to take turns and not play at the same time. Also, arcade cabinets had the benefit, and arcade games had the benefit of if it was a fighting game or something like that, somebody could put in a quarter and challenge the person already playing and defeat them and then potentially kick them off of their game, whereas there's no real way to do that in pinball, and doing anything like that would almost certainly start a fight where it became much more acceptable in arcade games. Although, personally, I will say, I found it very frustrating, and there was definitely some etiquette about asking, can, can I challenge him, can I play? Because if you just walked up, stuck a quarter in, and challenged somebody playing Mortal Kombat, uh, that, that too could lead to a fight, because a lot of people did not want to play player versus player and they did not want to lose their progress or lose their flow as they're trying to beat the single player anyways that's going to be it for this recording as always i ask you to like share subscribe comment and watch every second of my videos if you want a friend to follow me on any social media sites there's a whole bunch of links down below and if you want to support me further there's a link to patreon or you can friend me on steam and gift me a game off my wish list Thank you for watching. Have a good evening.